to go too. <laughs> What's up guys, welcome to today's episode where we've got a very classic old Harley Davidson setting in front of us, but it's actually not that old, brand new actually. It's got a Milwaukee 8 in it. The person that's gonna tell you all about this, Bjorn Schuster, who you guys have seen in a video previously where we were going over the ST, I believe. Yep. I'm also here with Ashley Neiman. We're gonna both talk to you a little bit about this 2024 icon. What are y'all's roles before we jump into it too quick with Harley Davidson? The director of design uh, within our industrial design department and Ashley is our manager of CMF and G which means color, material, finish and graphics. So what inspired you guys to choose this bike, bring it back for the for the icons, the hydro bike? Icons is a uh, it's a limited run of, of motorcycles which we we do on an annual basis. They're serialized so they're they're extremely exclusive and what we what we do with the icon program is we we try and leverage um you know sometimes it's a specific model sometimes it's an era from our past but we really want to lean into um you know celebrating that with a specific motorcycle each year and for this year kind of chose to lean into the classic hydroglide for a couple reasons um you know we tend to bounce around a little bit with our history what's happening culturally or with with certain trends and then we, we also you know, tend to look back at specific eras that inspire us. And I think everybody who's a Harley Davidson rider or admirer is, is certainly familiar with the term, you know, glide. You've got street glide, road glide, hydro glide, dyna glide, on and on and on. Well, hydro glide's really kind of where that started. What's special about the hydro glide or what inspired us to celebrate that, it's also a very important moment in the company's history regarding industrial design. Prior to 1949, there wasn't a specific design department within Harley-Davidson. The look of the bike, the, the styling of it, would have been handled by a group of, of very talented engineers and artists who were manufacturing the bike. And you see that, you know, when you look at the original the origin of, of Harleys, and you go back to kind of like all motorcycles started from a bicycle and, and evolved over time. You know, up until 48, all of our bikes had our, our Springer front end with the lean lift suspension and the, you know, the exposed coils up front. The headlight was taller, it was up here. If you look back at those earlier fenders, like if you're looking at a knucklehead or anything really pre-49, the fender's got kind of a trim that follows the arc of the tire a little bit. And that's a that's a little bit more indicative of, of some of those elements coming from those earlier models. You know, think of like a 1930s car with a balanced fender. After 48, 49, you know, you've got post-war prosperity and the amount of opportunity and the exploding economy in the U.S. was really putting a major emphasis on the design of, of common goods. So everything was becoming, you know, the look of products was really important to, to you know, driving sales. So what Harley did um, in 1949 with the original Hydroglide, they hired a, a design consultant by the name of Brooke Stevens. And Brooke Stevens was a really, uh, you know, one of the big, big design houses in the 50s. So you think about Raymond Lowy, um, Brooke Stevens, Henry Dreyfus, you know, Buckmeister Fuller. These were industrial uh, design agencies, automobiles, household goods, everything. So Harley really recognized that, you know, to make their products stand out, take advantage of this era, they, they needed, um, you know, something that was really going to be impactful from a visual point of view. So that's when they hired this consultancy. The biggest technical element of the Hydroglide really stems from the front fork. This is the first time that Harley walked away from the Springer front end and went to a hydraulic telescopic front fork, hence Hydroglide. Speaking of motorcycles, did you guys know that motorcycles have tires? There's one right there. <laughs> There's one right there. And you know what tires need to um, operate correctly is air, which is a perfect segue for the sponsor of today's episode, which is Fantic. So this is the Fantic X9 Pro Tire Inflator. User manual, a little recharge cable, and we've got the actual Fantic air inflator unit. One of those things you're supposed to do, like before you ride, is check your tire pressure. Cool thing with this is that uh, you don't have to remember to carry around the hose because it's just like automatically attached to it. So whenever you take that out, it turns the unit on, and then you're just gonna set your PSI from there. Set this to like 34, remove the cap here, thread this one on. Shows that we are at 27, so adjust that to 34. Hit the on button, and away it goes. 
It's actually relatively quiet too. It's actually going up pretty quick. There you go. Easy as that. The Fantic X9 Pro needs only 27 seconds to refill a standard motorcycle tire from 28 to 35 PSI. It can reach maximum inflation pressure of 150 PSI, and it's optimized for motorcycles, compact cars, SUVs, bicycles, balls, and other inflatables. With its own accessory storage slot design, there's no need to worry about losing the hose, as the hose and the body of the X9 Pro are integrated. It's got a large capacity battery offering long life and a cooling system. It can actually continuously work for up to 23 minutes without shutoff. When it hits a preset pressure level, it automatically shuts off, saving you the trouble of constant monitoring. Also, the enhanced screen is not only larger, but it also boasts excellent readability even in bright sunlight. All you need to do is pull out the yellow end of the hose to activate it and simply push it back into the inflator's body to turn it off. And if left unused for three minutes, it'll automatically turn off. I will also say the size of this thing is incredibly convenient. You can fit it into a bar bag, or if you have larger bags on the back of a bike, your saddle bags or something like that, totally fit into those as well. Super useful to have on hand, a long battery life, super quick, easy tire inflation. I don't know why you wouldn't grab one of these things. Check out the link down in the description below. It is an affiliate link to Amazon. If you guys are purchasing it within the promotional period, it should automatically load the discount as well. Big thanks to Fantic for the uh, X9 Pro tire inflator. Really appreciate it. And thank you for sponsoring the episode. One of the immediate things that will jump out when you can, when you look at a, the early Hydroglide versus the previous one, is just the introduction of that flat fender and that strong horizontal line shooting through. You know, and that, that created a lot of movement through the bike. So when you stand back, you know, and you look at it from a little bit of a distance, you really read that strong horizontal coming off the front fender and now everybody recognizes that fender. That's such a core piece of Harley DNA. What's really cool about the history with Brooke Stevens, our very own Willie G, that's where he interned. So he cut his teeth learning about design, uh, you know, after coming back from, from Art Center, interning at this, you know, really wonderful design consultancy. Wow. Willie was able to build on that knowledge and start Harley's first independent internal design department. So that alone was a was sort of a really cool piece of history for us in terms of celebrating the, the Hydroglide. It's also a moment in the history where you know our bikes really are starting to become definitive touring machines. You know the, the Highway Act was happening in the 1950s. People were starting to use um, you know, motorcycles to traverse the country a lot more. Our machines were so much different than anything else on the road at the time when you think about like the size of the engine, the quality of the ride. So those are all some of the things that, you know, kind of inspired us to look at this era and be like, hey, you know, this is a really cool moment. It's also the 75th anniversary of the Hydroglide. We really wanted to celebrate some of that era more with the two-tone. So this two-tone scheme came from 56 with red line red, birch white, um, that we're showing here is, as well as the tank medallion and the fender medallion so those were also you know of that era and then a lot of the other content on this motorcycle is from you know inspired from parts and accessories of the of the time as well just to give that whole feeling of like that 50s era color match tinted windscreen and the gauge we went back to uh you know that era of lettering for the numerals oh, and even so the colorway so small attention to detail yeah, yeah really all cool. the details on the handlebar risers where you get your serialized um, insert that calls out the model name the hydroglide revival as well as the 75th the anniversary yeah. chrome was pretty big back then and polished metal so we really wanted to get as much chrome on this motorcycle as we could we retrimmed all the soft trim seats saddlebags and um, went back to the tank console leather, color matched red, rosettes, it's more of a functional feature, but also very um, ornamental, and, and this bike is just fully embellished with all of that. We did the white piping to tie into the tank graphic, color keyed red stitching, so every detail on this motorcycle we tried to think about. The concho design, again, red acrylic to coordinate with all the different reds we're getting on this motorcycle. And then on the rear fender, of course, you get your Icons logo, um, this is part of the Icons collection. They're only making 1750 of these. We went back to the fringe, which actually has not only is it beautiful, but it has a functional a functional attribute. It, it helps wick away moisture from the the seat cover. When it hits in the wind, it pulls that water away quicker. So that was it's actually uh, something I learned working on this project. Was <laughs> not only is it cool looking, but it's actually a functional component to the design. So. Never knew that because you used to see that on a lot of stuff like yeah. back in the day. Yeah, yeah, that's where it comes from. Cow, you know, cowboy jacket. Right. It wasn't just like a. Fashion you know, Roy Rogers styling thing right. is like the, the actual pulling it away. Functionality, yeah. wow, that's cool. Seating rails, another you know another period correct kind of accessory that was really common and just helps tie the bike in. 
the DNA is still very much within a Harley. That's something to me as a designer that's really special about Harley Davidsons is that because there's so much of a connection to our past and our lineage, that we don't have to go out of our way to, to really fake things. You know, right. we're, we're taking the bones of this bike and adding to it. The result is something that very much, you know, has that connection to our, our yeah. past. Tremendous hours, like making sure that, you know, you replicate something down to the texture on the inside of this medallion. The detail in, in some of these conchos, quality of the two-tone. If you look at this, you know, this is, you know, seamless and you're not gonna have, uh, you know, a waving line between one bike to the next. It's, Put a lot of energy into kind of paying attention to all these details when you add them all up and then you stand back from the bike you know five or six feet that's what gives it the you know just that effect of okay it's a very unique machine one of the biggest sources of pride for me as a designer when we get to work on these icon models is when you roll into a gas station and somebody asks you what year is that what year is you know and <laughs> both ashley and i both ride highway kings we both got the hi-fi magenta okay the electroglide revival was the first year of the icon okay. and then we we kind of fast forwarded and celebrated the early 80s with the el diablo which was kind right. of meant to be an fxrt yep. you know, homage and then you know we we went back to the late 60s with the, the highway kings and beautiful now bikes. we're going back to the 50s yeah <laughs> so whenever i came up to milwaukee for homecoming they said, hey, we want to have you up. What bike do you want to ride around while you're here? Look what is parked beside my loaner bike. Ain't that a beautiful sight? And I picked the Highway King because it was just so different than anything else. And while I was riding it around that entire time, everybody would always ask me, oh my God, how old is that bike? You know, it's in great condition. Like, what year is it? And I'm like, brand new. It's like <laughs> brand new. So that's like, I think it says a lot about y'all and the artistry and that detail that you're talking about is that people think these are like super old. Called the Icon Collection for a reason, right? We're bringing back an iconic vehicle that innovated um, a motorcycle or technology or just a look for us. So we really want to do those icons justice and we want to stay as true to that original design vision as possible. All of these details, they really come together for the experience. I mean, for me, the, the tinted windshield, for example, I don't know why, but something about that, you know, when I look through the tint and I see the red bouncing around on the chrome, it just really gives you a sense of nostalgia when you're when you're rolling down the road. It's yeah. the same thing with, you know, even something as seemingly minute as a typeface can transport you, you know, to a, to a feeling or a time. That's kind of why we try and put as much accuracy into these as we can, because it's, it's building up, you know, the, the experience. So now we get to go ride it and I get to tell you guys a little bit about it, but thank you. Appreciate y'all. Appreciate all the info and the passion that y'all have for the design. All right, guys, and here we are on to the test ride portion. So the Hydroglide Revival number four of 1750. Let's get it. Woo, friction zone is right there too. Sheesh. Whoa, okay, so the first thing I'm noticing about this right off the bat is I am right behind this windshield. Hell yeah, a couple demo bikes, demo Harley Davidson. Sure, dude. It's funny, so I rode the Harley Davidson CVO Road Glide ST here. So getting back on something like this, such a huge difference because one, smaller frame, this is based on soft tail chassis, right? And two, just much, much different in terms of weight, handling, windshield in front versus big fairing, but protecting you from the wind plenty. Man, like I'm feeling no wind behind this. It's actually kind of crazy. Let's go over controls real quick because that's usually what we do on these test ride videos, right? So, right, right. Left side, we've got option button, horn, high beam, pass light, left indicator, and then these would be the, uh, the extra auxiliary lights in the front. So if we press those, assume they come on turn on somewhere below that you've got cruise control you press in to turn it on press down to set it uh you roll forward on throttle to tap brake front or rear to cancel cruise control you press up to resume to press it back in to turn it off it's going to indicate there it's a little amber light boop boop for the option switch if we press that it's going to change the options here in the gauge so you basically got the rpms that were set up right now you've got the fuel gauge above that but if i press option it changes over to the mileage so it's going to be odometer then we've got trip a trip B, remaining mileage, so that's a remaining gas in the tank, estimated at 107 miles. The cool thing about that is it actually like factors in kind of how you're riding and it'll uh, estimate it for you. And then we got time and then back to RPM. So we'll, we'll go ahead and leave it on RPM. Oh my God, I'm dying behind this windshield. This windshield is blocking so much wind. 
like having to lift my visor up Woo! give me some of this wind up here up top you've got your speed you're going to just multiply by 10 so one being 10 miles an hour two being 20 miles an hour etc etc it even says mph times 10 so looks cool you do have a gear indicator on your right from there so we're in fifth gear currently if i shift boom it goes to six noise so six speed transmission looking over on our right side you've got your on off switch on the far right so bloop bloop oh sorry let me tuck my thumb back in there my bad you've got your hazards and then you've got your starter and then you've got your right indicator so indicators are going to indicate right there the lower part of the dash got your neutral indicator in the middle oil high beam so if i boop high beam there you go and left indicator is there so the 114 milwaukee 8 in this thing let's go ahead and talk about the power plant in this classic vintage styled revival the hydroglide part of their icons collection so 114 milwaukee 8. so the cool thing about harley davidson is the uh, amount of modifications that you can do to the bikes and just the absolute ton of support that they have if you want to make the bike your own so if you love the power of the 114 it is plenty capable you can ride the 114 all day get in and out of traffic it'll get you up to speed it's got nice good amount of torque very uh, linear power delivery very predictable if you want more out of it you can always do like stage one stage two stage three or stage four so my personal bike i have a 2020 harley davidson lowrider s that we have put a 131 kit on we have gotten 170 horsepower and 160 torque out of that thing out of goldzilla it's an absolute monster so uh yeah you can get a ton of power out of these engines harley davidson definitely leaves a lot of power untapped in them a lot of people say oh it should come with that much power i disagree harley davidson kind of has to make a bike that is you know a couple things like epa compliant but then also is going to satisfy the need of uh, many riders they can't make anything too crazy but they can't make it too tame they got to hit like a nice little in between there they're making something for everybody and i think they've done a really good job with that let's talk about handling real quick tires are warm up and off right avoid the gravel handling feels good i am just about scraping that floorboard lean angle isn't too crazy let's get it Should have hit that a little wider. It's all good. Stout bike. Yeah, that windshield is doing work. Oh, the brakes feel so good. Let's do some engine braking. It's one of the things I love about the MA, it's the engine braking. It's easy, once you get a hold of it, it's nice. Almost scraping, almost scraping. Nice. This thing scoots, man. That 114 power, dude. I'm telling you, plenty capable. That's totally bone stock, and this thing gets, gets up and goes, man. A smaller frame, 114 engine, great combination. So I'm five foot 10 inches tall. Ergonomics, this thing is crazy comfortable. I'm pretty much sitting upright. My arms are just under my shoulders, which is good because if they're like over or too high, um, it'll actually kind of cause your hands to go to sleep a little bit. Let's throw cruise control on. Yeah. Cruise control. Hell yeah. The windshield being tinted. It's like this rose colored lenses. I freaking love it. It's kind of a newer thing that manufacturers are doing. Different colored windshields to a certain height, obviously. But then there's some aftermarket companies that are starting to offer different colors as well. It's, it's kind of cool to start seeing these like hitting the market and people being able to like throw some color into the windshields a bit. And man, you know, if you're just an optimist and you just want to look through some rose colored lenses, there you go. Hey, bud. How you doing? Man, to hell with going the rest of this direction. I'm going to freaking U-turn this shit and hit this road back going the other direction because that way is just more traffic. Oh, yeah, I guess it is a good opportunity to also talk about the bags. So you got these uh, leather bags. You can press in, open up, and boom, you got enough room for how many beers? I have no idea. That's usually how... I do my method of measurement. Let's see. Let's guesstimate. I'm going to guess you could at least fit 30 into this one and 30 into the other, right? Because they're like the same. I'd say 50 to 60 beers in this bike. I freaking love that they are like bringing stuff back like this, like older style. So whenever I went up to Harley Davidson for homecoming last year, they were, uh, they lent me a bike and they were like, what bike do you want? And I was like, can I take my pick of any, any bike in the lineup? And they were like, yes. So I chose the Highway King 
It was the, the one in blue, and man, I freaking love that bike. It was so fun. Got so many reactions riding around. I cannot believe how much wind this windshield blocks. I know it's called a windshield. You guys are probably thinking I'm stupid because of that. But seriously, like, this thing is blocking all the wind. So ergonomics-wise, I'm all good. It is super comfortable. The only thing that I would change, the bar position, the seat is actually very comfortable. I'm, I'm surprised. Especially, like, with the uh, little cage on the back, you wouldn't think that, I don't know, it wouldn't be that comfortable, but it is. I'm going to pass you. I hope you don't hate me for it. Not letting you ruin the only turns in Florida for me, homie. I'm sorry. Please forgive me. <laughs> Got plenty more room to go, too. <laughs> We're running out of road. Hell yeah. Power on this thing is great. Frame geometry feels really nice for being able to just toss this thing around. It doesn't feel heavy like whatsoever. Nicely balanced. Lower center of gravity. Feels great. Easy to find neutral. Coming up from first or down from second. Boop, boop. It is super cool being able to talk to the designers behind the bike and, uh, you know, part of the design team about, like, all the little details and stuff that they put in, like, the little trim pieces, the leather, like, the, the stitching, detail and the texture, like, behind the actual lettering and the emblem, font choice for the, for the numbers. It's super cool. Harley has done a great job. Like I said, I'm a big fan that they're doing this icon stuff. I just, man, I really wish they would come out with like a modern knuckle. I think it'd be super cool. Even if it was for like a year or two, that would be super cool. I don't know if they'd be able to get the knuckle sound if they were making a modern, but knuckle look with modern reliability would be super cool. I think it's sounding good. So grunty. Engine braking. Butter smooth. Butter. Seriously, this is it a double? No, it's a single-sided disc. But the brakes feel great. They're very, uh, very touchy. You guys do me a favor. If you're one of the 1,750 people that ends up getting to buy this motorcycle and owning it, post up in the comments below. Let me know. Now let me know why you bought it. I think it's awesome. Like I said, that they're bringing back these uh, vintage, you know, classic styles and, you know, throwing them onto the modern platforms. This thing feels so lightweight. It's low to the ground, the seat height, like my coming to a stop, my knees are pretty bent. I'm flat footing the hell out of this thing. The vertically challenged, this might be a good option for you because the seat height is pretty low. I do always like to offer criticism and uh, yeah, I don't know, maybe we'll go with, we'll go with seat because you know seat is a very personal thing i would say the bars but the bars are very like period correct you know you got like these mini mini vibe i would maybe push them forward a little bit but that's a super easy adjustment you just loosen the uh clamps and you push it forward so no big deal not really much criticism honestly the final question i like to answer in these reviews is would i buy the motorcycle so if i was in the market for something like this you know looking for something a bit more classic for sure it's pretty cool because you can basically buy this bike and you have the classic vintage look you're gonna have lots of people that are asking you how old is that bike whenever i rode the highway king i got that question quite a bit and uh it's super cool that you know you can get this look but the modern performance modern reliability with warranty and all that good stuff it feels good looks good it's a limited edition on that limited edition note big thanks to harley davidson once again for uh letting me test ride this thing i really really appreciate it being able to get opportunities like this is just amazing and I uh, can't thank Harley Davidson enough for the continued opportunities. In closing, you guys do me a huge favor. Those of you that have watched till uh, this far in the video, be sure to drop a comment and let me know what you guys think of the 75th anniversary Hydroglide Revival. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and close out here then. I hope you guys have enjoyed this video. Hope it's been insightful for you. If it has, do me a favor. Hit that like button. Help us hack that YouTube algorithm by hitting that like. It'll help to recommend it to other people that might be looking for motorcycle content. If you guys want to see more motorcycle content, be sure to hit that subscribe button. Hit that bell icon also so it sends you notifications of future uploads and activity. Until next time, you guys ride safe out there. Stay vigilant. We'll catch you guys in the next one. Peace. Don't try to reach.